for joining us. And they have. And Dennis Gates begged the students and begged the fans to come early at the start of this year. Right. And the teams responded and the fans have responded. Congratulations to Grambling and a win over Southern. We welcome everybody on our ESPN2 audience. Mike Morgan, John Sungold here from a sold-out Mizzou Arena where the Tigers are 14-2 at home this year. The Aggies are number two in the SEC at 11-2. 11-11 our score both these teams contrasting styles the Aggies Overly physical Nobody wants to play them defensively. They get after you Missouri one of the top scoring teams in the league And a &M has done a heck of a job on Kobe Brown when he catches it inside They've sent two bodies or three bodies on him made it tough for Brown Who's now one and five from the field to score the basketball? That is the first three for Dexter Dennis, the former Wichita State Shocker. He started, started 94 games for that program. What a find he has been in the portal. And what a great athlete, great defender, tough, physical. And when he makes a jump shot, it's a plus because then he can get some big numbers. These two teams met five weeks ago in College Station. The Aggies won that ball game. Missouri looking for revenge today. The Aggies trying to make it five in a row in the SEC. And there is that tenacious stifling suffocating defense by AM. and and Mike as fast as we talk about how Missouri plays especially in this building that is the second shot clock violation right. they've had already so A&M doing everything they want to do in the defensive end you can watch five games without Missouri having a shot clock violation usually they shot they shoot it within 10 seconds exactly right you and I have been here with that Iowa State game oh, it didn't take them eight nine seconds and they had shots up beyond the three-point line they ran the Cyclones out of this building Missouri forces a ton of turnovers and they score a lot of points great matchup here Hodges great with his hands defensively one of the best in the nation in steals and Wade Taylor can handle the basketball Air ball fired up that time by Hayden Hefner. He's out there to shoot the three. Missed that one. Missouri in transition. And a missed layup by Diara, the six foot ten junior from France. And then led by their backcourt, Wade Taylor. Boy, has he not just gotten better every time you see him? He, he's terrific. I mean, he's a sophomore. I, I like the way that. Buzz Williams describes him. He talks about IQ and he talks about EQ, emotional quotient. He likes the emotions that Wade Taylor has as his guard. Between Taylor and Boots, Tyrese Radford, yeah. those two guys get to the free throw line ten and a half times a game. That's just their backcourt. A&M goes to the free throw line more than any team in the country. And those two average nearly 30 points, eight rebounds, six assists between them. Uh, outstanding last game after they beat Arkansas Andrew Monaco back to John Thornton on the radio when Buzz is on him He said Wade Taylor goes. I'm his biggest fan. Yeah loves the kid Dennis pulls the trigger on another three and tracking down the rebound is Hodge Hodge full throttle Hodge all the way goes for the jam and missed it. He bubble gummed it on the front rim Here come the Aggies the other way Dennis stop and pop got it Wow, what a transition. I, I, it almost looked like the ball was halfway down. Yes. He got stuck on the front. Came out, and then the push by Dennis in the jump shot. Did you have that problem back in the day? Y yes. <laughs> I'll just go with that. Yes. Don't ask not. me any more questions like that. <laughs> Chameleon on the turnover. It, I mean, he took off like he was ready to rock the rim. And the reason it's missed, it was challenge defense. Challenge. Right? You had a yep. guy that challenged it. Now De Dennis comes to the other side. Here's a good thing for the Aggies. If Dexter Dennis scores a basketball, then his confidence goes through the roof. And he can he's a threat offensively. We know how great he is on the defensive end. He is bouncy as well. Dennis, an elite athlete. Oh, Hefter just stepped out of bounds. Taylor threw it to Hefter. Hefter tried to tightrope the sideline and couldn't do it. Boy, two minute turnovers for this Aggie team. Now they're playing well, but you get on the road and you got a chance to build a lead. There's a foot on the line. You got a chance to build a lead when it's home team's not playing so well. You yeah. can't build it. You can't put turn well, and What Missouri normally does, they. They get steals, right? Ten steals a game. It's number two in the country. But some of these turnovers by the Aggies are just unforced. Yeah, right. Five-point game under nine minutes to go. First half. Now remember the first meeting of these two that the Aggies won, 82-64. They dominated the offensive, or they dominated the rebounding, and they played Missouri chest to chest and forced difficult shots. 
Sonny, that is that is three yeah, shot clock violations on a team that usually gets a shot off within 10 seconds. Again, it's chest-to-chest -chest defense. They're saying beat us off the dribble if you can. They guard guys, and they're staying with shooters. So nobody is allowed to catch and shoot. Missouri right now is in a scoring drought of nearly four and a half minutes. And we're talking about a team that is top 20 in the country in scoring at over 81 points a game. But again, this is what the Aggies can do to you. And a team that only scored 56 on Tuesday against Auburn. So they're struggling a little bit, maybe mentally. A couple of bodies got tied up on the full court pressure. Taylor hit the deck, and the foul will be against Mizzou. That'll be 14 fouls on the Tigers with 8.38 to go. That'll be against Sean East, his second. Here's what has not bothered Missouri this year. They've got veteran players. Right. Right. Six guys, 1,000-point scores. All of the transfers, most of them that came in from mid-major, were all conference players. So they've never been rattled to where they just get out of a game. They've played, not played so well in some games, especially like they did Auburn. Credit Auburn, how well they play. But they don't get rattled, especially in this build. Right. Trying a blind pass was Hefner. That's his second turnover. And the 11th turnover of the half for Texas A&M. Keep an eye on the matchup. Kobe Brown now has got Wade Taylor on him. I'm surprised Brown doesn't head to the... Low box. Post him up, right? Yep. A lot of size giving way for Taylor. Brown just standing in the corner. East, meanwhile, will bank it home. He's got a great mid-range game and another turnover just simply taking the ball out of bounds. Now, Wade Taylor's going to say it was tipped. And Buzz Williams saying the same thing. We'll clean it up when we come back. 7.59 to go. The Aggies are up by three against Missouri. They were 24-32 from the free throw line, so they dominated both sides of the floor. Dexter Dennis had 13 points along with 12 rebounds. He had a double-double. It was a game played, uh, again, in Reed Arena. It, it kind of rejuvenated I thought a and m program that they were then starting to get on a roll. And they've been on a roll ever since in conference play. A really shaky non-con start to the season. Buzz Williams telling us today at shoot-around, that just put more pressure on us to get it together. We knew we had to start winning a lot of games in SEC play. Otherwise, we had no shot at the big dance. And let's go back. Most of these guys were on the team last year for AM that did not make the big dance. They right. were disappointed and had the run in the NIT. This guy was with a Michigan State Spartan last year, and you saw some of the moves he was able to make back in East Lansing, Julius Marble. He has been so terrific, averaging double figures in the SEC. Once SEC play came, he, he, he's been kind of elevated his game, especially in the offensive end. Yeah. Went through some issues during his time at Michigan State, lost his father. There's a three, knocked down by Colston. Look out because Missouri can ignite as quickly as anybody from behind the arc. I almost just yelled game because he's had a couple <laughs> game, game winners the way he pulls up and shoots him. Mizzou has now hit three out of the last four from downtown. They shoot 36% on the season. Bradford trying to respond. It's the rim twice. Tapped out of bounds. It will remain Aggies basketball. And that's going to be the key matchup in this game. Rebounding. Aggies are great at it. Missouri struggles with it. And here's Julius Marble. His, his ability to attack really since SEC play started. And what Golston can do, one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the SEC, and rise up from deep. Sometimes better off the dribble when he gets to the lane. He had the game winner against Tennessee on the road. Missouri comes into this game last in the SEC in rebound. This is going to be a turnover. How about that? East oh, grabs what, what, it. What? And, oh, my goodness. Dexter Dennis soaring in the air on the rejection. So what we thought was an easy two, he wipes out, and AM still has the basketball. Buzz was shaking his head as the inbounds pass was made. Dexter Dennis like he came off a trampoline. Spectacular athlete. Dennis on the other end, skies and banks at home. Dexter Dennis, who was known for his defense at Wichita State, he has become a weapon on both ends at AM. Open three from the wing, and that's what Missouri does. Des Moines Hodge, when he gets 12 points or more, the Tigers are 15-1, and one, and he's off to a great start in this one. And it credit Golston because he's aggressive off the dribble. Trying another defender, frees up Hodge, who doesn't take but a split second to get the shot off. Second three for Hodge. Coleman has it knocked out of bounds. I've got to see this Dennis block again to believe it. 
This was not a goal 10. He just timed it perfectly. Spectacular play, and Shawnee slowed up probably too much. He had an easy bucket. Then you come down the other end, and again, when Dexter Dennis gets confident on that offensive end, look out, because not only will he make jump shots, he's a terrific athlete. He'll play over the top of most defenders. Defensive player of the year in the American Athletic Conference last year for the Shockers. Meanwhile, Henry Coleman at the free throw line, the former Duke Blue Devil out of Richmond, Virginia, 6'8 junior. And he had a double-double in the first meeting between these two teams. Henry Coleman, another one of those X-Factor guys. Any one of these guys in an A&M uniform will help you in a number of different ways. None of them has to score 15, 20 points in a given game to win you a game. And why they're better now is they've got a couple guys that can score when they need a bucket. Wade Taylor being one, Boots Radford being the other. And m now four for four at the free throw line, something they do well. Taylor on a steal. Here's Dennis. Look out! Just gliding through the air. He was not going to be denied. Great hands by Taylor to slap it away. Dexter Dennis with another easy finish, but he makes it, he makes it look easy. But it's spectacular. Air ball by Aiden Shaw. We were not sure if we were going to see Aiden Shaw in this game today. Talented 6'8 freshman from Overland Park, Kansas, but he's been in and out of the lineup. Taylor on a floater. Back iron on time that time for Taylor, the sophomore. And Taylor does not miss many of those. Oh. Those are his kind of shots. Blow by Colston. Miscommunication out front. And no one on the weak side. Back to a three-point game. Under five minutes to go in the first half. Radford, a.k.a. Boots. Gets it on the return from Coleman. Goes to work up top on Golston. Skip pass to Taylor. Spots up a three and hits. Nice, nice patience, no rush. Said it before, we've watched this guy as a freshman now in his sophomore campaign becoming, I think, an all-league player. The way he plays, the pace he plays, the confidence he plays in. This hesitation, some guys get a little rush, especially in that first half. Normally, they're a quick starting team here. They've not been tonight. Credit AM's defense, but also Missouri's got to be a little more patient, find some openings to get better shots. Missouri just 28% from the field thus far. And when it's been a rather low-scoring first half, which you would think might favor Texas A&M. East. Managing things up top, finds Hodge on the wing. Switching a lot of the screens, so they've got to communicate. Another good shooter for Missouri, another miss. Great tap out by Brown, but into the hands of Taylor. Taylor racing in the front court, Euro step in, draws the body contact and the foul. You know, you were telling the story about Wade Taylor, Lancaster High School in Dallas. His teammate was Mike Miles, who I have heard by text is back playing against the TCU, which makes TCU an, an, another, they're an outstanding team, got a chance to be a Sweet 16, maybe a Final Four type team. But could you imagine Wade Taylor and Mike Miles in the same backcourt together? They, they were terror in the Dallas area. Well, you mentioned TCU, another league I know you're quite familiar with, the Big 12 leading the way in teams in the top 16 today. Top four out of each region announced today. Alabama, number one overall. They would be in the south right now. There are two SEC teams in the top 16. Of course, Tennessee, the other right now. The Volunteers on the three line. And again, I'll go back to the question I posed earlier. Who's the third best team in this league? If the Aggies win this game, I'd say they're at least top three. Uh, if, they, if they win this afternoon, I've got them as the second best team. Yeah. Tennessee lost against yeah. to Kentucky. That's right. Tennessee has been swept by the Wildcat, Wildcats. And now you got to think Kentucky is in very good shape. And the Aggies should know they are one game out of first place. The, the first thing you want to do is try to hang a, a championship banner in a league championship. That's right. Baseline drive, contact, offensive foul. Offensive foul called on Aiden Shaw. They almost baited Shaw into taking the baseline. They got on his outside shoulder and said, we're going to give you the baseline. See if you'll take it. Slid over defensively. Good communication from the weak side. Second foul on Shaw. As you look at the updated conference standings, Bama 12-1, and a and 11-2. And here's Kentucky now. Two victories over Tennessee. So just when you want to count Kentucky out, it seems like there are a lot of people out there that would love to do that. And what a week they had. They won on the road at Mississippi State. That's right. And then you beat Tennessee. Yeah, that Mississippi State game came down to the final possession. And we know the Bulldogs have been tough this year. They pulled off 
an overtime win against Ole Miss today. And right now, the our own Joe Lenardi out of the bunker has eight SEC teams in the field. Drive and dish, shot blocked by the seven-footer Diara. And the shot clock did not reset. Taylor stripped by Hodge. Hodge, who leads the league in steals, but that time got some arm. And that'll be team foul number eight on Missouri. So a one-and-one one upcoming. Opportunities for AM. Garcia missed the basket. Here's a little drop pass. So there's the reach right there. But again, AM stayed with it. Shot clock didn't reset, but right. quick enough. Taylor put it on the floor. They'll actually say that shot, the foul was on the shot, so Taylor will fire up a pair here. Taylor, a reliable free throw shooter at 84% on the year. AM now 7 for 7 at the line. And again, they go to the line and make more free throws than any team in the country. They're 19 for 25 on average. They make 19 free throws a game. That is more than any team in college basketball. Yeah, it's incredible. They take second most and make the most. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a formula that works and because they've got a guys that are aggressive with the ball right. and they can attack playing downhill. But it, it seems like such a simple thing to say, right? Attack the rim. Go, yeah. go attack the rim and go to the basket. Good things will happen. But a lot of teams settle for jump shots. You would never do that. <laughs> well, I, honestly, I'd take that free point before I take the jump shot. Yes. Give me the free point. Yeah. Again, Missouri having a hard time getting a good look, bleeding the shot clock down to six. And know this about the bigs. Well, a ball are powerful. Know this, Mike, about the bigs of both teams. All of them can move their feet well and can defend outside. Both squads can do that. That's why they can switch so much. Outside, both teams can do it. And don't be surprised whether it's Colbert on one end or Kobe Brown on the other. They can stay with guards defensively. Six points now for Kobe Brown. Dennis left alone on a three. He spins around shot. and down. He is having a terrific first half, and that yeah. shot looks great tonight. Does he have 14 already? 14 points, five rebounds for Dexter Dennis. What a half. Drive and kick and just out of control that time was Nick Honor. And when Honor went drive and the weak side came and what happened was he throws it away. There's the rebound by Kobe Brown. And Dexter Dennis, once a guy gets going, starts making shots, you better get to him. Yeah. And I don't care what his stats say, maybe he's not shot as well on certain nights and certain times. But he's shooting it well tonight. Double figures three of his last four. Arkansas game, he had 14 points, 11 rebounds, his third double-double of the year. There's been an evolution in that young man's game. He's just a oh, different player right he now. He is fun to watch. 1-3-1 one, one zone now by this Tiger squad. Shots will be in the corner. Dennis again. Pops out of there. Brown on the rebound, leading the break. Brown to Hodge. Hodge, rise and fire, missed everything. Dennis saved it into the hands of Coleman. That is not atypical of a Missouri shot. They like those threes. They like shooting in transition. And if Hodge has an open one, Dennis Gates wants to take it right. He, he's a great shooter. Rare for a guy to shoot an air ball. And rare for Missouri to shoot 28% in the half. Shot clock at seven. Good Rapper. ball movement. The lefty triggers a three. Tapped out of there and back into the hands of the Aggies. It's not necessarily the Aggies game to just settle for shots. Mm -hmm. And when the zone defense was put in, I still think the Aggies have to be cognizant of get inside that middle area to Garcia, see if they can get to the paint. Bradford's perfect inside. Yep, exactly what you called for, partner. And that's what his game is. Yes. Uh, he is the master of the mid-range. Boots, Tyrese Radford. Mike, if you settle for jump shots, Against a zone that's like a high school team. No, attack it. And AM has been terrific in his first set. Six of the ten right there. Not easy. And I got to see the Baylor team last week in person up close. Those three guards, don't be surprised if they can make a run to final yeah. four. They're that good. They're They're that those good. Guys, they got three guys that can handle it, and three guys that can shoot it. And when you have offensive weapons like that, veteran guards, that's what everybody wants. They've got what's exciting to me about this upcoming March Madness, as we talked about earlier, it's not like a couple of years ago where Baylor and Gonzaga were clearly just elite teams above the rest. As you see Brown carving out space and muscling another deuce inside. But I, I don't know who to pick in this year's NCAA tournament. I mean, 
I think there are about 10 teams that can win it. Well, we know that. And from, from the SEC angle, you look at Alabama. I think they're as good as anybody because right. we know offensively what they can do. I don't know if enough people nationwide know how good they are on the defensive end. Yeah. And it's they're very good. Extremely long. Shot clock off. You, you, put them, you put them one of your 10 because there's a bunch oh, of Oh, no doubt. Taylor on a deep three. Wow, Heat check of about 28 feet out. What and a first that half. We'll close out the half. And what a half it was for the Aggies. Texas A&M looking for their fifth straight win and trying to add to an 11-2 conference start. So you handle the basketball and win. against Mizzou. Again, they met five weeks ago in College Station. a and won that game convincingly, but I think a lot of people figured payback would be in order. We'll see how the second half unfolds. We have not seen one of those Missouri runs, especially in this build. Tough shot. Look Offensive rebound, yeah. And look how physical they are inside. Yeah, I mean, they are a problem with their physicality versus just about anybody with Coleman, Banging bodies, Julius Marble inside, and we already talked about the athleticism of Dexter Dennis. They don't necessarily have the height, right? Marble is 6'8", both of them 6'8". Right. But their girth, they can push and shove, and they're athletic. Hodge, hooping the harm. Des Moines Hodge came gliding in from the baseline and gets a three-point opportunity. Good backdoor cut. You're going to run him off the line. You got an outside shooter. So Wade Taylor's playing up to the nine. Backdoor cut. The defense is late getting there. Hodge, if he can get on track for Missouri, that's probably the one guy that gets and ignites his team to get on rolls. Second foul on Radford. You see the... The line on Hodge, and I mentioned that stat to go back to your point, Sonny. When he gets 12 or more points, and he's sitting on eight right now, Mizzou is 15-1. and one. So, so often their fate depends on what kind of night you get from Des Moines Hodge. Yeah, it really does. And when they lose games, he doesn't shoot the ball. No, not at all. He's their best pure shooter without question. 14 point game and you got to get into offensive sets earlier or you get into trouble with a shot clock and The shot clock under five for the Aggies Taylor late clock fires up a three and hits it right between the eyes of Kobe Brown my goodness Didn't matter the shot clock guards don't mind when six eight guys guard them because they think they can move them off the bounce way Taylor did it and that was deep Taylor does not play like a sophomore. No, and, and we've just watched the progression Buzz Williams always says, I give him a little leeway because he might take maybe an ill-advised shot now and then, but he can do that. Brown on a response. Kobe Brown has really improved that aspect of his game. 46% from behind the arc. They traded baskets here to start the second half. Still a 14-point game. Marble. Puts it on the deck. Oh, that's a tough shot. Not exactly his forte, but they get it back again. Another offensive rebound. Beautiful pass by Taylor into Marble, and he got hammered. Ten offensive rebounds now for the Aggies. Marble took the tough shot. They got the ball back. He goes up. He takes a big hit. He Gates gets to pick the shooter. Correct. And they put Henry Coleman on. 72% free throw shooter. I did not see Buzz come out onto the floor. I mean, Buzz is just trying to make sure his player is okay. But because he did that at that specific time, they were forced to make the substitution. Well, I think there was a concern because Marvel laid there for right. a bit. Right, right. I mean, that's just your natural inclination as a coach to make sure your player is okay. Honor. Brown steps into a three. Left it short. Dennis reels in the rebound. Not many second chance opportunities for this Missouri team tonight. This opening stanza, I think we both thought would be extremely important for Missouri. So far, advantage a and &M. I don't like that shot by Taylor. I know he's made some, but it's kind of quick. Leads to a run out. Carter fouled on the other end by Dennis. And that might be one of those one or two ill-advised that Buzz can live with. By the way, Taylor, but not preferred when you're on the road and you've got a good roll going. Long miss. 
Carter has a chance. Quick foul by Denton. I think that's a good quick foul. Noah Carter at the state of Iowa, a senior, a transfer from Northern Iowa. Of course, led by head coach Ben Jacobson. Does a fine job with that program. And like so many of the players that star on this Missouri roster, he's a transfer. He's a first-year guy. you got Kobe Brown returning, and then the rest are a bunch of mid-majors, several of which followed Coach Gates from Cleveland State. Carter, an all-league player to Missouri Valley Conference, over 1,000 points score. Another one of those guys with experience, veteran player. Doesn't get too bothered whether the playing time's a bunch or not. Said 17 starts on this season. The portal has been very good to Dennis Gates in this Missouri program. If you look at the teams that have struggled this year in the SEC, a lot of first-year coaches that had their roster slipped over didn't have as many impact guys out of the portal. The question, Will, you, you think that Missouri would have a big run in it. Can a &M do these kind of things, make open shots, and not allow the run to happen? Handle the offense, don't turn it over, make Missouri guard defense, find open looks, and then when you get those, you've got to convert them. Kobe Brown thought this was off of Dennis. Dennis hit it, but then I think they said off of Kobe's leg. Oh, no, now it looked like it hit Dennis's hand last. Might have gotten a break on that one. Marble. I remember the game Marble had against Florida. At Florida, he was outstanding in the low block. And that'll be an over the back foul on Texas AM. And the Aggies right now, I mean, we, we knew that AM was likely going to out rebound Missouri, right? I mean, the, the, the stats tell us that. But it's three to one right now. I mean, that's a concern. Yeah. I'll tell you what else is a concern. That's foul number three on Tyrese Radford. The concern only usually is from an offensive rebound. Missouri's yeah. missed a lot of shots, so there's right. going to be a lot of defensive rebounds. Sure. But the way that AM has been able to crash on the offensive glass, get all these second shots. And they can always run this three quarter zone defense, slow the tempo up a little bit to a high octane Missouri team. Are you not surprised we don't see more zone in general? It all depends. You know what? To me, it all depends on a what kind of coach you are coaching, and b what kind of teams you're playing that are shooters or not. Shooters. Right. If you don't have a good shooting team, yeah, why not zone them I, I, and make teams beat you? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple teams in this league that, quite yeah, frankly, aren't right. good at shooting the three at all. That you would think you would zone them a lot more than they actually do get zoned. Turnover on Missouri. Eight turnovers now. And the Gordon, Gordon won't mind that matchup with Kobe Brown Gardner. Gordon's not necessarily a one-on-one -on -one guy that takes guys, but if the shot clock runs down, see, guards don't mind when big guys come out because they're usually late getting there. Tigers down by 13. Golston goes to work, takes it in strong, missed it. There's Diara on the follow. Diara with a man one. Well, you wanted size now in there for Mizzou and Mo Diara. Played only five of the first 15 games for 18 total minutes, but it is a last 11, averaging 14 minutes a game. He was terrific in the win at Tennessee at seven points, five rebounds. He's mobile, he's quick. 18 minutes again in the Tennessee game, but a guy that can guard outside, he can rebound inside. One of the first commitments for Coach Gates, he had to take a lot of English as a second language courses. Remember, he comes from France and worked his way to becoming a Division I basketball player. It has not been easy. He has had to do double duty in the classroom, double duty on the hardwood, but he's become a factor, and they believe in time he's going to be a really good post player in this league. So does this crowd bother a veteran Aggie team? On that possession, they did. Yeah, Marble simply put his head down. Now, defense might have not got there, but it's an easy call for the official. 15-51 to go. Missouri crowd starting to get excited, folks. Ten-point game in Como. Arby's new Steakhouse Garlic Ribeye Sandwich. Who knew the best thing to come from a steakhouse wouldn't even come from a steakhouse? 
Arby's did. That's who. But you wouldn't have said that two years ago. And you might not have said it last year. Right. To do now, and he's an all-league player. Again, I think he'll be up for player of the year. Whether he gets over that hump, I'm not so sure. Because right now, I think Alabama will sweep a lot of those awards. But uh, Kobe Brown, when you, you and I come in all these practices with a shoot-around. Every team that comes in to play Missouri, the first thing they talk about is number 24. Top of the scouting report every time. Son of a high school basketball coach back in Huntsville, Alabama. And as you mentioned, with the portal, it's so easy to just give up a, a coaching change. Could have just bolted. He stayed here, and boys have been a marriage made in heaven for Missouri and Kobe. Hodge pulls the trigger on a three, missed it short. Kiara tried to throw it off an Aggie out of bounds, but the baseline official, it's Owen Short, I believe, says nope. Hard to see from our angle. Let's see if we can see it here. Oh, it did go off his foot. That's why they're officials. That's why, That's why they're they had the whistle. Johnny on the spot. Nice job by Owen Short, Tony Green, Rob Work, our officiating crew tonight. And give credit to Coleman defensively was right there on Hodge, so he didn't have a good look. Tell you what, there's a focal point right now offensively to get it pounded inside the marble in the paint. Taylor, shake and bake. Oh, what a dime to marble! And an add one for the Aggies, all set up by Wade Taylor, who is just dropping dimes left and right. How do you play that lead guard spot? Well, he, he backed out the defender. Now he attacks. Weak side defense has to come over. The farthest guy from the rim can't get there in time that bounce pass now the bounce pass has to be firm and you've got to be confident that you're big can handle that kind of a pass taylor special if there's a player that just kind of fits the build and the look of a buzz williams guy it's this guy at the line julius marble i mean you want to talk about a physical presence <laughs> both ends of the floor marble is just someone you don't want to have to deal with and his emergence since SEC play, mm -hmm. he's a different player. But yeah. again, he's confident. He's now used to the system. He's used to his teammates. Missouri's got to have an answer. And you're still waiting for that run by the home team. The lead balloons back to 13 for AM. East tries to thread the needle down low to Carter. Yeah. I think Carter thought East was going to take that because that's his game. Big range jump shot. AM, it's all about pace, right? Control it on the offensive end. Dennis on an open tray. Got it. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Andre Gordon, a former player, meaning former starter for many games for Buzz Williams. Puts it on the floor baseline. And AM spacing it out. They've attacked it inside. That allows shooters freedom from the outside. Andre Gordon put it on the floor, point guard position. Take a look. Now, look cross court. Got those losses I really think Sonny I know every game matters but when you look at it to me th this is a team that deserves a better seating than that yeah they do and they may play their way in it and, and they have over the last six or seven games I hate that you're in a roundabout way you're penalized for some of the things that happen early in the season because yeah. when you're building a team uh, for a big time league whether you're in the big 12 or the big 10 or the SEC you're building a team that can weather a big-time conference, and you're going to have some bumps along the way. I think a &M's kind of been penalized for some of those losses, but give them credit because they knew their backs were to the wall. Well, how about Marble running out of the And they have answered since the start of SEC play. 8-0 run by the Aggies. Yeah, I, I think it's important to note, too, that's not Joe Lenardi's opinion. He projects what he thinks the committee is going to project as Brown answers her in three. But he's been pretty good. Oh, he's been great at it. The, the good news is the committee is full of 12 human beings. And I would think those 12 human beings, if AM continues to play like this in the SEC, what happened in November, I'm not saying it's irrelevant, but clearly this is a different team right now. Well, here's the great thing. But counting tonight, you have five games left regular season. So there's a lot of basketball to be played by a lot of teams. And if AM keeps doing what they're doing, a oh, good block. Dennis already has 17. Another offensive rebound. Garcia, he got fouled inside. How about Anderson Garcia and what he has brought to this team? Last three ball games, 21 minutes a game, seven rebounds a game. 
for the last seven balls. I mean, his minutes have gone up because, as Buzz Williams said, Andy Garcia is an elite rebounder for us. Does all the and, dirty work. And he's done it, and he is getting big minutes, and he keeps basketballs alive for second chances. See those metrics on the Aggies. 32 net is certainly pretty strong. Strength of schedule. You don't see the two quad four losses. That's what's putting them down to a nine seed right now. But again, that certainly is subject to change here down the stretch. But this is a team nobody's going to want to play in Nashville in the SEC tournament. Talk about Texas A&M. And we talked about this too with Buzz Williams. And if you go back to his days at Marquette, three sweet 16s, one elite eight. Go back to his days at Virginia Tech. His teams do damage in the tournament. If they get there, that style of play travels real well in March. Well, solid defensive team, rebounding team, free throw shooting. They yep. shoot a lot of. Now, what do you need? A couple guys that can shoot to make shots for you. And AM is finding a way. What a great rebound by Nodiar. Wow. Yeah, great minutes by Diar. Yeah. They need a spark right now. Maybe Mohamed Diar is that spark. Yeah, they have to be able to get on a little bit of run. It's been so comfortable for a and M, which is what you want when you travel on the road to get a lead and, and make it comfortable on yourself. a and m breaks the pressure rather easily. Bradford in the front court. Again, veteran guards, all good ball handlers for Texas A&M. That's a luxury against this swarming Missouri D. Bradford on a triple. Air ball. And a foul down low, and that's going to go against Missouri, trying to box out Julius Marble. Diara carving out space, trying to keep Missouri in this game. 13-point lead for the Aggies. The Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits, like two times miles on every purchase. The noise canceling. You're being too loud. Thank you. According to Joe Lenardi, again, these are all projections, of course. Big East with five. And the SEC, if the SEC does get eight teams in, that would tie the most ever for the Southeastern Conference. Big games today. Win by Kentucky over Tennessee, Mississippi State in overtime over Ole Miss. Dennis during the 17-point night. There's the rebound, the follow, the foul, two more. And a chance for three for Garcia. He has the ability to chase and to follow that basketball. No blocking out by this Missouri team. And Anderson Garcia, once again, a transfer from Mississippi State. Always chasing that basketball. Uh, when we talked about Garcia today with Buzz Williams at shoot around it, Buzz's eyes just lit up. I mean, this is this is a Buzz type of player. Well, one of the big difference makers, I think, when they got an SEC play, his minutes went up because of the little things that he was doing for this team. Meanwhile, AM doing AM things at the free throw line, 11 for 12. And if they score, they can put that token pressure on that slows Missouri down on the offensive end. All right, what does Mizzou do to get back in this game offensively? Well, they got to make some stops defense. Offensively, you got to keep pushing, make some shots. And then they've got to find a way to get stops. What's the strength of Missouri? Is to get steals, right? right? They've not been able to do that. Well, A&M's been pretty good with the basketball in the second half. They were a little sloppy in the first half. 19 points now for Kobe Brown on a big three. Cuts it to 13. And if you don't steal it, this allows A&M time to handle the basketball, handle the clock, bad pass. There's the steal. He slows up, throws up a teardrop, and a block foul on Garcia. That's a difficult shot. <laughs> Very difficult, yes. I thought he had a layup or a two-on-one break, and then he hesitated. Yeah, he pumped the brakes here. I'm not sure why, but he, he just stops and goes. Two-on-one right now, and then he stopped. It allowed Garcia to get back. Now they call the block. Fortunate for Sean East. East has had a terrific season in this Missouri uniform. 6'3", senior out of Louisville. Averaging 8.5 points a game, and... 82% free throw shooter. New Albany High School across the river, Louisville. He won 100 games, 100 wins and 10 losses in his four years as a high school player. That's a pretty good winning That's percentage. pretty good. Yeah. Well, one thing we know about Missouri, 
I'll, I'll use the word spurtability. They have it. It's a mean, good one, yeah. I mean, so you, I mean, you got over 10 minutes left in this game. At any moment, they can go on a 13-2 type of run. And if you're the opponent, you can't allow what they just did there. You can't make passes cross court to right. the score. You've got to take care of the basketball and at least get shot attempts every time down. Taylor breaks the timeline, hounded by Hodge. There's that trap. Taylor in trouble. That's going to be a jump ball. And the arrow goes to Missouri. Hodge leads the SEC in steals. He's got great, great hands, and Brown is solid. They make the trap. Hodge with his quick hands gets in there. Easy call for the official. Missouri basketball, and here comes Missouri Arena. Yeah, the, the crowd has been silenced for much of this day, but just waiting to explode here. Bucket could cut it back to single digits. Toby Brown going to work. Backing in, draws a double. Brown in trouble. Just tosses it back up top. East on another runner. Knocked out of bounds. Mizzou basketball with 18 to shoot. The defense for AM is outstanding. I mean, Missouri does not have easy looks. Now, East likes the runner, but it still was not an easy look. Well, what AM has now compared to a couple of Buzz's teams that would have to make every game into a rock fight in order to win, they can combine the great defense with some offensive skill. Yeah. Look for a lob right here. Diara's got a small one on him. Diara, he's got six hands in his face. How quickly the Aggie defense helped oh my every cover. Yeah, like bees to honey. Golston trying to shake and bake Dennis. Kick out. Hodge on a three. Got it! Eight-point game. 8-0 run by Mizzou. And a timeout for Texas A&M. Nine oh four to play. Things getting interesting here at Como. Weird. Come on. Well, great teams are able to win games when not everything is going your way. Missouri has not shot the ball particularly well. At times they've been a little bit careless with the basketball, and the Aggies have pretty much bullied them on the offensive glass. But here we are. An eight-point game with under nine to go. And Wade Taylor nearly lost that ball. Fortunately, went right to his teammate Solomon. Shot clock at five for Radford. Now three. And a reach-in foul with two on the shot clock. And that's going to be the fourth foul on East. Well, Dennis Gates was almost in a defensive stance. Looking, he had his team all set and in the whistle former three-time captain at Cal a member of the 2002 NCAA tournament team and longtime assistant coach at Florida State and there you see from 98 to 2002 is a great player in college but it, he always knew coaching would be in his future he learned a lot under Leonard Hamilton two-time Horizon League coach of the year at Cleveland State he's got great patience Got a fire inside him, though. His team is now answered. They need to stop. Radford. Silencer wow. from downtown. Radford. Another assist from Wade Taylor, the fourth. Five assists for Taylor. Huge bucket for AM. Screen. Good matchup with Washington. Step back three. Kobe Brown. That's an NBA move right now, there. It's so impressive. No matter the defender, what size he has on him, Brown can take guys off the dribble or what he showed you there, Mike, the step back. 
22 points from the senior to lead all scorers. It's back to an eight point game. Three ball handlers for AM. Radford, Taylor the fourth, and Dexter Dennis. Dennis left alone. Pops out. And a rebound corralled. And then a reckless pass by Golston trying to hit the six foot ten Diara. Not sure what Diara is going to do with it if he gets it. And then a hoop and a harm, a chance for three the hard way for Coleman. How big is that decision by Golston to try to kick it ahead to your 6'10 player? A steal by Wade Taylor. The drive by Wade Taylor. You need an answer, another assist from Taylor. The conversion. Aggies still up 10. Every time Missouri starts storming back, the Aggies have an answer. And one of the biggest answers is Wade Taylor, the fourth. I mean, he has had unbelievable assists in the second half. I think back of their win in College Station this week against Arkansas. He had two points at half. He had 16 points in that second half. And took over the game to make big plays down the stretch. 72% free throw shooter is Coleman, and he hits the back iron. A 10 point game, seven and change to play here in a building which Missouri has only lost twice all year. Tigers 14 and 2 at the friendly confines. You think it has to touch Kobe Brown's hands? He has five of six beyond the three point line. He's the, yep. And they go back door cut. Beautiful job, Sean East on the business end of that exchange. Great set play, Dennis Gates out of the timeout. And then trouble inbounding it for Taylor, a timeout called by the Aggies. Mo Diara has given this team some huge minutes, Tennessee. Yeah. They beat Kentucky in this building. They beat Illinois in a neutral site. The way they beat off. The way they beat Tennessee. That you know, and they've done that a couple of times this year. Those are the kind of games where you just think, like, okay, this might be a team of destiny. And they had the big win. You and I were here against Iowa State. Yeah. Impressive from start to finish. Yeah, that was a complete smackdown of a very good Iowa State team in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Radford finds Dennis. Dennis with a little leaner. Missed it. Tapped around. Garcia, another offensive board for the Aggies. Dennis's last two shots have both been in and out. Dennis probes the baseline, and that time turns it over. 17th turnover for the Aggies. Dennis normally goes in with a little more purpose that time. Yeah. I thought he was a little soft. Right. Gets it knocked, knocked out of his hands. Yeah, I'm with you. I thought he was going to attack the rim. Yeah. An eight-point game. As, as many things have gone wrong for Mizzou, here they are. A chance to cut it to six, maybe even five. And here's the guy that has been very valuable, Modiar, up top. When he's in the game, a lot of times they'll put him up top and have cuts off him. Great matchup here. Brown on Dennis. Kick out pass. And Golston passed up the three. Threw it to Brown in the corner. Too much passing, and Golston knows it. Boy, isn't that something? He doesn't pass up many. No. Seen him all season long. And he passed it to Kobe Brown, who wasn't even thinking that Golston passed <laughs> no. that ball. Kobe's out there in the coffin corner saying, what do you want me to do with this? Go ahead and take that shot, DeAndre. DeAndre's a good three-point shooter, 36% on the year. He shot 43% last year while a member of the Milwaukee squad. The lead remains eight for the Aggies. Holds with 10. Tell you what, shot clock gets so low that you're just forced to go one on one. Radford's one of the oh. best, though, oh. in this league. Wow. <laughs> Tyrese Radford hanging and falling backwards at 6 2, somehow gets it to go. Brown on a three. Too strong. I don't know how Tyrese Radford hit that shot. You know what? He It's amazing because he gets bumped. They don't even blow the whistle, and he hesitates and hangs so long. 
Loves to go left. We know that. Left-handed. Draws a contact. He's open for a whistle. The defender, though, stays away. No whistle. Still makes a shot. And that is on the six foot ten, Mohamed Diara. I, I try to think of like comps, Sonny, for Tyrese Radford's game because he's so unorthodox. He's six foot two, and yet he shoots nearly fifty percent. He out rebounds some of the best big players in the league. I, I mean, he, he's just he's a unicorn in so many different ways. So unique, how he plays, how he handles pressure. Another guy we've talked about, Kobe Brown, and his progression. How about this kid's progression, right? Every year a better player. This season even better because he shoots the ball better, mm -hmm. right? All we talked about Boots Radford before was a tough defender, right. and he got a lot of rebounds. Right, right. Now he's uh, he's he's unbelievable and, off the bounce. And, and a really catchy nickname, which was given to him by his head coach and Buzz Williams because the moment he saw him, he said, you are as tough as shoe weather. But think of this. Now they handle the ball to beat guys off the bounce. And he can make threes. Yeah. Total play. And gets to the free throw line more than anybody in the league. That's him set their defense again. Token pressure. But look at the clock goes down. Missouri's got to get in a set offense. Missouri looks a little bit out of sorts. Golston. To Brown. Brown drops it. Collision and there's the whistle. It came late. Wow. But there is the I, whistle. I don't like the whistle. Here's why. Ball's yeah. up in the air. Yeah. Up. You're rewarded. So why doesn't Kobe Brown shoot that? He right. Late night. Well, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm surprised. So, so he right did here, Brown's got a shot. Yeah. Tries to lob it. I get it. But DR is so underneath. Yeah. Ball's in the air. Marble comes across. Contact, but both guys had the ball up top. Both the has some great moves. Yeah, he has. At times, he has really kept Missouri in this game. Still relatively new to the game of basketball. A 56% free throw shooter. Shirt tail kind of tucked in and now ready to go. One and one. A little bit funky. Aggies will bleed clock. Yeah, good patience. Dennis looked like he initially might take it and attack. Run some clock, run the offense. They've had success off the bounce. Dennis lost it, picked up, or not picked up, it's tapped out of bounds. And survey says Missouri. Yeah, his left hand mm -hmm. hit that out of bounds. Good job by our officiating crew, Tony Green, Owen Short, Rob War. A tough league to officiate. Uh, it's brutal because I don't think there's a more physical league this year than the SEC. Under four to play, 12-point game. Honor, been quiet today. Whips one into the corner. Hodge to the other side. Honor has one rim off. Diara there for the rebound. Got poked in the, perhaps the eyes. He goes down for the count here. You know, there was no whistle when he rebounded the ball. And AM wants a travel. But now all of a sudden they're giving up a few more offensive rebounds right. to this Missouri squad. Taste of AM's own medicine here by Diara. 19 on the shot clock. Brown will take it on the inbounds. Up top to Golston. Dennis is so good defensively. And a reach in foul. That's the 18 foul on the Aggies. So a one and one upcoming for Mizzou. That's a gift right now. Yeah, the and, and, and it's a it's a a reach by Taylor. He just kind of swiped at the ball, but but it's no, you don't need to. Yeah, risk versus reward at this point. You're and, up 12. And you're swiping at a ball that, that your best defender, Dexter Dennis, is going. Right. So don't worry about that. Good point. Golston on the one and one. That's wow, the second miss. front end miss on a one and one from Missouri. Big misses. The 
again the value of Radford Wade Taylor the fourth the Dexter Dennis all good ball handlers do not turn it over very often and all good off the dribble Radford slice and dice and a block foul what a makes block it foul on Golston. Hey, hey Mike what makes it hard to get in front of Boots is that his ability never goes in a straight line. He's always cutting. See, so he he's already planted off his left foot to dive a little more to the right. So then Golston's got to move those shoulders and glide with it. He rarely goes in a straight line. He's always cutting angles, and when you do that, it's hard to take charges. Radford back to his second home, which is the free throw line. He goes there more than anybody else, but it's his first trip in this ball game tonight. And gets the first one to go. The next Southern Hoops, a history of SCC basketball. I've really enjoyed this. We'll take a look at 1980 through 1989. Georgia's Dominique Wilkins, Auburn's Charles Barkley, the success of Dale Brown, Pat Summit, part four of the seven-part series, Monday at 9 Eastern on the SCC Network and the ESPN app. I've had a chance to work with Dominique on some NBA games. I know you played against all these guys from the 80s. I saw a few of his notes. Yeah, and you were probably uh, looking up at Dominique like the rest of the NBA at that time. I, I told this right? story the other day. I was a uh, going to be a senior in high school. I went to Milledgeville, Georgia for a BC All-Star camp. And, and I'm the same age, Dominique. And I remember playing the games in the All-Star game, <laughs> but watching him particularly. Yeah. When I came home to Little Blue Springs, Missouri, and they said, Who's good? I go, there's a kid named Dominique that, that, <laughs> that I think he's already a pro. A power dunker if there ever was one in yes. Dominique Wilkins. Won two slam dunk championships. Oh. Should have won a third in Chicago, but that's a whole other story. Well, Wade Taylor just took one in the jaw. Oh, goodness. Man. Oh, man. How does that one get looked at? I mean, that's elbow above oh, the neck. Smokes, yeah. That's got to get looked at. That's an automatic. Yeah, let's hope he's okay. I mean, he's right in front of us, and he's struggling. Now we are getting another uh, explanation this time from Owen Shorts. They so don't, don't have many turnovers. They've had too many. But, but rebound, make free throws, make some shots when you have to. They've done those things. Yeah, I, I think the story of this game, if this score holds, it's not what Missouri did wrong. It's what A&M continues to do right. And, and I just, I can't say enough about them. Andre Gordon is coming in. He has started many, many ball games for this a &M Doesn't make piece. mistakes. No, he doesn't. Solid. He's, he, he doesn't have to score a single point to help your team win games. That's been his career. Well, how about Missouri at the free throw line? Yeah, that's been a problem. It's Eight of 13 miss. now. Yeah. Including two critical misses of one and ones. And, and think of the road team. Comes in here, we know they shoot a lot of free throws. AM is 18 of 15. Oh, yeah. You go on the road, they always say don't, don't have many turnovers. They've had too many. But, but rebound, make free throws, make some shots when you have to. They've done those things. Yeah, I, I think the story of this game, if this score holds, it's not what Missouri did wrong. It's what A&M continues to do right. And I, and I just, I can't say enough about the way that man has transformed this roster over the last couple of years. And so he now has the kind of teams that he had at Marquette, that he had at Virginia Tech, that, again, not only doing damage in the regular season, but could certainly do damage come March. Shot clock under 10. Gordon to Dennis. Dennis with three. Going to have to heave it. Nice job by Kobe Brown to corral the rebound. Solid defense and allows Missouri to run. Golston will go back to the free throw line as he draws the contact. And again, I always think you have to be careful. I know you're running clock, but the, but you have to be careful at letting the clock run down and right. you don't even get a good look. Yeah. Gordon, his first and where Missouri now, the luxury they've had is they're getting to the free throw line. Now they've missed free throws, but they're getting there and the clock is stopped. 
And you take a look at his score, and you say, okay, what are the odds of Missouri getting to picking up 70 points? Can they get to 70? Right. Well, then a and only got to make three more points. I mean, there's you start taking numbers and go, okay, where can they get? And if you think it's 75, well, then a and got to have a few points. It's a Sunday afternoon of college basketball, a doubleheader on ESPN at 1 o'clock Eastern time, number 23, NC State hosting North Carolina. And then it's number two, Houston hosting Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers. Uh, those games will have some wow, yeah. impact for sure. It's, it's, it's hard to believe the Tar Heels after making the national championship game a year ago on the proverbial bubble right now, preseason number one. Let's be honest, they do have the luxury. They're called North Carolina. <laughs> I'm just saying it. Never I'm hurts. Saying it in a bad sense. Never hurts. It, 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 there's a luxury to it. Brad Brownells had a good job at Clemson, but they find Amen. themselves on the bubble. Right now, Mississippi State on the last four in. They picked up an overtime victory today against Ole Miss. Two minutes now remaining in this game. And Taylor. Mississippi State will be here Tuesday against Mizzou. That'll be a classic matchup Rebound. indeed. Honor. Into the corner. Three ball. Missouri. A bad time to go cold. Here's Taylor. And does a wise decision. Then gets fouled by Honor. And that'll be the 10th team foul on Missouri. You mentioned that number. 70 points from Missouri. When they hit 70, Sonny, 18 and 0. And I, we talked at the very top of the show today. Tempo, contrasting styles, which one would prevail? A&M has certainly prevailed in that in that regard. They have. Uh, one of the key things is Missouri has shot the ball so poorly. Yeah. Continuing from the game against Auburn, but not shooting well there. It's rare that they've had two games in a row where they've not made shots, even their best shooter. Right. Now, Especially the one, guy, the one guy that's carried him tonight is Kobe Brown. If he, if he would not have made shots, it would have been a bad night. Right. Now, if you play in a, in a quality caliber league, like the SEC, you're going to lose road games. You just are. I mean, there's nobody going undefeated in any of these leagues this year. The, the thing that stings a little bit more about this one for Missouri is it's, it's at home where you played so well this year. And AM was just better in this game tonight. So far they have been. And you, you, you again, what AM does so well, and in the last minute 44, can they still control all the pace, right? This soft token pressure doesn't allow Missouri to push it up and get easy shots and quick shots. They just, AM's got to keep Missouri off the free throw line. They don't want him to get open looks. This Hodge is a good one. Offensive rebound and a stick back for Carter. More full court pressure by Mizzou. Clock is the ally of the Aggies. Have you ever thought Tyrese Radford would really be the point guard running the show? <laughs> right? I mean, I mean no. that's the cool part of college. Yeah, we get to really see you guys won. year in, year out, get better. Now, I, I think as more and more people get to know Tyrese Radford and see him play, yeah. and something tells me he's going to be on a grand stage come March, you'll get to appreciate one of the more unique players in college basketball this year. Thought he had somebody to tap it to in the corner, but nobody was there. AM has come into a building that has been difficult to win it. On a little bit of a roll, and they came in this game, Mike, after a huge win in College Station against Arkansas that I thought was pivotal, really, for Arkansas and AM. They right. win that game in that second half, they come from behind. They win that game, and now you travel up here and you think, well, all. Odds are against AM walking into this building and, and the way Missouri's played here, but they've led from the start. Well, they had a five game winning streak to start conference play, and the Aggies are going to have their second five game winning streak after this one. They knocked off Georgia, Auburn, LSU, Arkansas, and now on the road. You see what the rest of the schedule entails. Tennessee will be a dogfight at Starkville, at Ole Miss, and then. The finale against hey, number one Alabama. They are one game out of first place. Yeah. And everybody yeah. forgets all that. They talk about nine seed, eight seeds. They're a one game <laughs> out of being tied for an SEC championship. Haven't been at the tournament in five years, but they certainly are looking like 
a tournament team right now. The Aggies come to Como and pull it off 69 to 60. Your final score coming up next year on ESPN2. It's Pac-12 basketball with Arizona hosting Colorado. Uh, wait, hold the phone. We're one put second, one second back on the clock. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's in the handshake line. But we've got one second left. I had a dynamite send off. <laughs> I, I, I was all ready to send it to Dave Pash and Corey Williams in Tucson. I mean, that was going to be Emmy Award winning. It's going to have to be, be put on hold. Wade Taylor. 21 points, 10 of 10 for the free throw line to lead the Aggies in this game, which I promise you will come to an end at some point. Aggies are going to improve to 20 and 7 overall, 12 and 2 in the SEC. And with the inbounds and the heave, that is all she wrote. 69-60, your final score. That'll do it for us, for John Sunville and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Mike Morgan saying thank you so much for watching. Let's get you to Tucson now. Dave Pash, Corey Williams standing by. Gentlemen, the show is yours.